Hello and welcome back to the RDA. I hope you are doing well. It's Triple M back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at some key elements I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to get right over the course of the next five to ten games in order to keep his job at Manchester United and develop some consistency. I'm going to be taking a look at the formation I think he should play, as well as the players that should fit into that system, how Van der Beek will fit into that system and where I think he kind of where, where I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got it wrong with Van der Beek. And then I'll also be talking a bit about Paul Pogba. Now, when I look at these next five games, I think they are very, very winnable. It's West Brom, Istanbul, Southampton, PSG in the Champions League, and West Ham. Now, those three Premier League games are very, very winnable. We can get nine points from those. We can probably beat Istanbul at home, and we can probably do something against PSG, as we've proven in the past. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has PSG's number. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not too bothered about the PSG game. I think the focus should be on the other games. I think the frustration with Manchester United fans at the moment and the reason why so many of us are kind of leaning towards Oli out, and even those of you who are Oli in are very frustrated, is because in, for the first time, we group of teams in that sort of top eight, top ten bracket that are all in a transitional phase. You look at Arsenal with Mikel Arteta. He's coming into his first proper season. Obviously, us with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer into our second season, his second proper season. Um, you look at Chelsea He's uh, with Lampard. He's into his second season. Mourinho with Tottenham. He's into his second season. Angelotti. He's into his second season with Everton. The list goes on. A lot of teams in the Premier League are in a transitional phase at the moment, which means that we are in a very inconsistent league. The structure of the league has changed. And so there is a genuine opportunity for teams like Manchester United to compensate for the lack of experience in the coaching staff and the riskiness of the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, signing him as permanent manager. It might not be that bad of a risk if he can capitalize and be a consistent top four contender and sort of come make us potentially title challenges, if we, whether we do get a, a new manager or stick with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he could potentially turn this team into a title-winning team if he is given the time. Whether or not he has coaching nous or tactical ability to do that remains to be seen. I personally don't think he'll ever win a title, but, you know, um, never say never. So for me, uh, my personal opinion and why I am so frustrated with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and why I am Ole out is not because of the league position that we are in it's not because of the league position it's not reactionary to the first six games of the season it is because over a consistent body of games since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has taken over Manchester United before Donny van der Beek signed before Bruno Fernandes signed um, he has shown that he's a tinker man even when he got relegated with Cardiff he was a tinker man he is a manager who does not consistently pick the same formation with the same components to that formation like, if you want a clear example, the midfield trio over the laws in Manchester United has changed so many times, fam. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. We've had Matic, Bruno, and, 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 um, and Pogba play in that awesome nine-game or eight-game run in the Premier League that got us third post-lockdown. Before that, it was McTominay, um, Fred, and Bruno Fernandes. Before that, it was McTominay, Fred, Pereira, slash Lingard, where they were alternating between the 10 position and Mata occasionally playing on the right. That was god-awful. That spell where we lost 2-0 to Burnley um, at Old Trafford. Um, and, and I think that was, the, that was the low of the low for me. That was the low of the low for me. Nothing beats the way I felt that evening. But we are seeing that pattern and that theme consist like it's a consistent theme with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's the only thing he's the only thing he's consistent with is not being consistent. He hasn't I don't think he's played Van der Beek particularly well, and I'll get onto that in a minute. I, I, I really think this is the frustrating element for me. And this is not an Oli Out video. This is just me saying what I think Oli Gunnar Solskjaer needs to change if he is to stay in the job. Um, I really, really think he needs to first pick a consistent team shape. And he needs to figure out which components fit best into that team shape. So speaking of team shape, I personally think the 4-4-2 diamond is still the way to go. I still think we don't have width in the right areas to be playing a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. If we play a 4-2-3-1 narrow, which is basically where you play with a right attacking midfielder, a left attacking midfielder, and a central attacking midfielder, not necessarily a right winger and a left winger, then that could potentially work because you could find a way to fit Pogba in, maybe in a more advanced position on the left. You could play Bruno in a more advanced position on the right. You could play Bruno in the central attacking midfield position and still fit Van der Beek in on the right. I think he can do the job. One matter do at the moment. Now, look, one matter, technically speaking, is a fantastic footballer. 
in terms of experience and decision making. He's a fantastic footballer. But I think Donny van der Beek is an intelligent footballer. I think Donny van der Beek is a technically gifted footballer. And I think Donny van der Beek is quicker than one matter. He's more agile than one matter. He's more fit and has more legs in him than one matter and can play more consistently. I think the fact that Donny van der Beek has not started is inexcusable. Now, I do hear the argument about Donny van der Beek not being an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer signing. I get it. I get it. The board did not back him in the summer. And trust me, I am fuming still fuming at the glazers but at the end of the day you cannot not pick a talented player just to send a message to the board that is childish that is stubborn and i'm not suggesting Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing that but if that is what he's doing if he's just sticking it to van der Beek because it's not a player that he really wanted i think that's incredibly idiotic because he's better than what you're using he may not have been your cup of tea right you may have wanted Grealish right you may have wanted Sandro but Donny van der Beek is a fantastic footballer and i don't understand why you wouldn't use him like, personally, if I was a manager and I didn't get Grealish and you gave me Donny van der Beek, I wouldn't complain. But what do I know about So, yeah, fam, with Donny van der Beek, I think he absolutely needs to get into the team. I think one matter should come off as a bench player or as a squad player. He can play in the EFL Cup. He can play in the FA Cup. And, yes, he can play in the odd league game. I don't, want, I don't mind one matter starting the odd game or starting consistently so long as it's not every single game. I think we should have a consistent starting 11 and one matter should only come in as a squad player or a role player into that team. Now, moving on from the whole Donny van der Beek issue, in the central defensive midfield, we've had a interesting set in Solskjaer. We've seen Matic play there alone, but he doesn't really have the legs to run that midfield by himself. So we've seen the variations of Mata, Fred, I mean, sorry, Matic, Fred, Matic, McTominay, Fred, McTominay play in the holding, the double pivot. Now, I'm not a fan of the double pivot. I think it's too defensive. I think it's too negative. I think you are losing your attacking prowess to compensate for defensive weakness and a lack of pace in the defense. And I understand why, whilst I understand why Oliver Nassau is doing it, he doesn't persist with it. He doesn't, he's not consistent with it. Sometimes he does it, sometimes he doesn't. In the diamond, you can have Scott McTominay or Matic sitting in front of the back four and Fred with more license to get up the pitch and then have either Pogba, Van der Beek playing next to Bruno in a more attacking role where they are not at risk of losing the ball directly in front of the back four. The diamond for me solves all of these issues because number one, you can fit your best midfielders into a system that actually worked against one of the top teams in Europe. And number two, you don't have to worry about being like losing your attacking prowess by overcompensating for defense, defensive issues. Maguire, Lindelof, they're not quick enough. We've spoken a lot about it on this channel. So that's what I mean when I talk about defensive weaknesses. Now, he could stick Twanzebe into that team. I'm not going to get into the debate. That's another thing he could do. He could go with Twanzebe next to either Maguire or Lindelof in order to, to make sure that he doesn't need to play two defensive midfielders or one of the defensive midfielders has more license to get forward. That could be a potential solution. Problem is, Twanzebe might not stay fit for a very long time especially in this climate where players are, are extremely taxed in terms of their um, in, in terms of the amount of games they're playing. So look, I think game time will come for Twanzebe. I think injuries are inevitable. Now, I want to focus a bit on the attack since I've talked so much about defense in the midfield in this video. On this channel, we have spoken a lot about players like Anthony Martial and his hold-up play, what he does off the ball, the spacing, the runs he makes, and, the, and just the chances he creates for his teammates as a player. Not, never mind the fact that he scored 20 goals last season and actually got, he's actually debunked this myth that he's not a striker, right? I think the Firmino role, the, the, the role that Firmino plays in, uh, in, in Liverpool in their title winning squad, as well as the role that Olivier Giroud played for France as a hold-up player, plus the 20 goals that he scored last season, is why I think Anthony Martial could make Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 system work. Now, the reason why I think the diamond is a little bit better is because if you look at the 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, whatever you want to call it, the formation where we basically play the front three of Martial, uh, Greenwood and Rashford, Greenwood and Rashford don't create the kind of chances that you need for a proper number nine. Now, if Cavani got stuck into that team, I, he would score a, go a lot of goals. But if you noticed the assist that he got on the weekend against Everton, who played in that team? One matter. It wasn't Greenwood and Rashford on either side with Cavani in the middle. Cavani is not going to score as much as he could if we played a system that allowed for the for the players who play on the width on the flanks 
to cross the balls in and center their game plan around creating chances for one sole striker. I don't care who's scoring the goals as long as the goals are being scored. Like, I, I really don't. I love this personally. I don't like the proper number nine, the big bullish, you know, um, target man down the middle. That's never been my type of player. So I think the reason why the diamond works and the reason why the diamond is so good, if we have Alex Tellis playing as a wingback and Aaron Wambasaka can develop his, his gameplay as a wingback, we've got Pogba, Van der Beek, Bruno, or even Fred playing in the diamond role, there is so much potential for chances to be created for two strikers as opposed to one with Rashford and Greenwood next to them. I don't think we have the proper wingers to play a system that relies on width unless we're relying on the wingbacks. And the wingbacks are prevalent in the diamond formation. The wingbacks are the bread and butter of the diamond formation. And I think the wingbacks become quintessential to the diamond system. Not only that, but you've got two wingbacks who are bombing forward. You've got the midfield who's moving across the field and maintaining a diamond shape. But if your center forwards can split the defense apart, it gives people like Van der Beek, Bruno, and potentially even Paul Pogba, if he plays in a more advanced position, an opportunity to go down the middle and have some shots. The goals and assists that Bruno Fernandes gets, even though he is not a striker, is absolutely mental. Imagine how much more we would get if we could penetrate teams down the middle and use Bruno as sort of a center forward slash cam, um, cam type player. Same with Van der Beek, same with Paul Pogba. I think that's dangerous. But anyways, enough about formations, enough about tactics. I think it's about time we wrap this one up and I'm pretty sure you're tired of listening to your boy. I think the most important thing to do is I don't mind if the personal preference of the manager at my club differs to my personal preference. I do not have a coaching degree. I've never managed a team in my life. So I'm just a football fan. I can talk and talk and talk till the cows come home, but I'll never know what it feels like to be in a changing room. So it is what it is. You know, managers, you're not always going to agree with them. My problem with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, though, and I will argue this, you do not need a coaching degree. You do not. Need, I'll argue this till my face turns blue. He's... He's, he's, his tendencies of being a tinker man is really going to cost him his job at Manchester United. It cost him his job at Cardiff. I don't know what he did at Mulder, but that's almost irrelevant um, because nobody really talks about it. Being a tinker man in the modern game, is, it's, it's, it, it belongs in a museum. It's archaic. It's dinosaur, fam. It's, 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 it belongs in the dinosaur era. You cannot be a tinker man. Liverpool do not tinker with their tactics every single game and change the way they play according to every opposition. Man City do not tinker with their tactics and change the way they play according to every single opposition. So yeah, I think if there's any hope for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in particular to build some sort of consistency, he needs to have a consistent team selection, a consistent team shape and a formation that matches that team shape. I think it's a diamond, but whatever he picks, he needs to stick by it. He needs to stop this thing of changing, chopping and changing formations every time. It's all right using a back five or 4 2 3 one against, in the odd game against a big six side away from home. But if you're doing it every single game, even against teams like Everton, it gets a bit much. It gets a bit annoying. That's where my frustration is with this manager. I hope he's a bit more consistent going forward. And I think if he is... He can do it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has proven that he can go and run with Manchester United. It's about whether or not he can stay consistent. Um, but anyways, peace out. Enjoy the rest of your day slash evening whenever you're watching this. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one.